Hi everybody, today we are going to do four different silhouetted skies. I just really wanted to focus on techniques of wet on wet and how to beautifully blend colors to create some really fun sunset, daytime, night skies together. So I just did a couple thumbnails trying to figure out what I wanted to do and I think these are the four that we're going to focus on. Beautiful birds in the day sky, a darker sky with trees, a pretty pink sunset, and then like a purple Hawaiian type of sunset as well. So those are the four that we are going to focus on and these are the types of colors that we're going to use. So I'm going to start off with the first one and we're going to have fun doing a darker blue green on this one. So when you're doing wet on wet, and I just put my paper into four different sections here to make it really easy. I have a really wide brush that I use to cover the whole page in water here. And you don't want it too wet because you don't want it to puddle up because then you really don't have control over your watercolor paints. You want it to be wet enough that the colors will blend beautifully, but you still have control where it's blending on the page. And because the silhouettes are going to be black, I'm not worried about making sure I leave blank white space for these shapes that are going to go on later. Now I'm going to take a beautiful dark blue and start putting that onto the page. Keeping that paint pretty wet just so when I add more colors to it, it'll beautifully blend with those new colors. And I'm going to basically cover two thirds of this square with this blue, a little bit down to the edges here. And then I'm gonna come in with like a, a blue green to fill in the middle here. And you can see that it's already blending in pretty well with that blue. And I'm gonna be a little more, more liberal with this darker blue up here on the edges, just cause we're starting to get, it's a more towards like the end of the day. So the sun is already down and you're starting to get that beautiful night sky. Now to really darken it up, I'm gonna put a deep purple in these corners as well and just kind of dabbing it towards the center to kind of create the look of a beautiful night sky and just randomly putting those colors wherever. I'm going to grab a little more green here just because I love how this green is blending with these blues. And then again, dropping in a really pigmented dark purple. Now I'm not really blending on my palette here. I'm just going straight into the color and dropping it in. Dropping in some water here. Get some more fun blend on the page. There, that's, I think that's satisfactory for me. And I think to create a uh, Milky Way, we're just gonna do this. I've cleaned off my brush and have it basically dry. And I'm gonna come in and just Pull up that paint. You can also do this with a paper towel, just scrunching it up like this. 
and dabbing it in the center there. Cool. Now we've got that really neat night sky. I'm just putting in a little more color to really accentuate the edges of this Milky Way here. Then, I think that's pretty good. I'm just gonna dab a little bit more because I love the softness that it creates. And we're gonna let that dry and then we're coming later with the silhouette. So, now we're going to do the second sky. I think let's go with this orange, pink, and red sky here. So we're gonna have yellow, some yellow, orange, and pink blending into the top. So we've got a beautiful, probably a sunset happening here. And then we're gonna have some tree branches and birds in that scene. So again, we're gonna come in with a completely damp canvas here. Now, if you like to come in and draw your silhouettes in first, just so you have that reference with you on the page while you paint, you can. And I'll do that with these two so you can see the difference. But this is pretty wet. I'm not getting any piles of water. So I'm gonna come in with my brush and get a warm yellow to go at the bottom here. Drop in that warm yellow. Now the hard thing about mixing these colors is I'm using colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. So the blues, purples, and greens are next to each other on the color wheel, so they blend really beautifully. When you start blending complementary colors, that's when you start getting wonky colors like green. If I were to mix a blue and a yellow here, I'd get green in my sky, which is not very pretty at all. So you have to be careful with that. So I'm putting a little more pigmented yellow down here, bringing it up, and I'm just gonna go straight in and grab me a pink. And I'll start turning into my orange. Now I kind of want a little more saturated orange here. There we go, that's what I wanted. And I'm just putting it randomly on the page here. There's no right way to put your colors on the page. Now I'm going to stick with a warmer pink on the top here, which will blend really beautifully to create this like peachy orange that's just so pretty in the sky. Come down and blend that a little more with my yellow and I'm just going to put more yellow on my brush blend up. And grabbing just a little more pink on the top here, just because I really love that color coming through. Okay, now we've got that sky here. This is going to be beautiful. Now, if you want to create some clouds, you clean off your brush completely, and we're doing something similar that we did with the Galaxy. I'm, my brush is completely dry, and I'm going to come in here and pick up some of this paint just to create little white splotches of clouds on my page. And they're not super defined, which is fine. I don't really want the clouds to be the main 
uh, focus on this painting. The main focus are going to be our silhouettes. Okay, I'm really loving how that is looking. I just don't want I just want a little more pigment down here. Okay, now we're going to move on to our third, which let's go on with this pink, orange, and purple sky that we're going to kind of turn into an ocean here. Now for this, I'm definitely going to put my pencil on the page so you can see how that's going to turn into a reflective ocean. We're gonna do this one right here. So my beach is gonna be about here. And I'm gonna have the palm fronds of a palm tree coming down off of the corner of my page, just kind of drawing lines like this. I'll, ha I'll do one, a second one peeking off here, and then a third kind of coming off the side like that. So we've got uh, the peak of what will or I will understand as a palm tree and our sandy beach here. Now, with that beach, we're also going to do, I'm gonna have it come up a little higher here. So this is our beach. Then the ocean line is coming across right here. And that this area is where that reflection is going to be of this sunset. And I'm gonna have some land that comes out here above the water. Okay, so there's our silhouette. Again, we're gonna go in with our water and get the whole thing wet, including the parts where your palm trees are. Because when you paint over your silhouettes, the spots that are not black from the silhouette you'll be able to see your beautiful sunset through instead of having white spots. And I'm gonna come down all the way down here. Okay. Making sure it's evenly damp here. Beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with my other brush with some clean water on it. And we're gonna start with the yellow right along the ocean line here. So I've got a warm yellow that I'm working with and I'm dropping it all along here. Coming up. And you're going to basically do a mirror of where your colors are below that horizon line right there. And I'm gonna go straight away, I think, into my warm orange here. And then again, Copying that color into the water. And then bringing in a pink. And dropping just a touch of the pink into the water here. And then the beautiful purple up top. So it's, it's a little darker out, a little later in the day than this painting because of that purple there. Signifying that it's, it's getting darker. Maybe putting in a little bit of blue around the top. That'll blend with that pink, creating this really nice purple which is what we want here. And I'm just dropping some of it across to look like these darker clouds. 
There we go, beautiful. Now I'm going to take a clean little cloth here and right on the horizon line where the sun would be peeking out, I'm just going to create a circle of white. And that is our sun there. The brightest spot in the sky. So pretty. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the fourth and final one, which is going to be the birds on the telephone wire, the telephone line. And this is going to be more of a daytime look. We're gonna have a brighter blue and some pink on the bottom. Like the sun is starting to set, but it's still pretty nice outside. So that's what we're gonna do in this last one. And I'm just gonna draw in these birds here. So here's the first telephone wire and the second. Now these birds are pretty easy with the silhouette. All you have to do, it's like drawing a snowman, except the snowman only has two circles. So you've got one, two, and then a little triangle for the tail here. I think I'll have another bird right next to him right here. And Let's do a guy sitting by himself right here. We can have, uh, and let's do two right here. We'll do a really fat one. <laughs> and then a smaller one next to him. And those are gonna be our birds. And the telephone wire. Again, we are going to cover the whole page with water here, making sure it doesn't pile up anywhere, make any puddles. And just get in the middle a little bit more wet. It's funny sometimes with these brushes, um, little flecks of fuzzies get in the painting, but you don't have to worry too much about that. Okay. Now with this one, rather than using a, a navy blue, I'm going to use a more turquoise, not super turquoise, but a much lighter blue. We're going to start at the top here. And I'm going to purposefully kind of leave white areas of clouds. So I'm leaving a spot here for a cloud, here, and And maybe a larger one right here. Yeah. And I'll define it more with kind of a warmer green blue coming into the second half of this page. Gonna get a little more pigment. I want to, because as you can see with these other ones, the colors dry a little bit lighter. So you can be much more liberal with these colors. And gonna just define this cloud up here. So we've got one here, one here, and then this bigger guy right over here. My water is pooling up a little bit more in this painting. So I'm gonna, I've got my clean dry brush and I'm going in where it's pooling and picking it up. And then I will put in color a little bit more later. Once it dries, we're just blending in this fun, more like turquoise blue. 
and then bringing in this really light pink at the bottom. And that pink is going to reflect a little bit on the bottom of these clouds here. So once it starts to dry a little bit more, that pink will be much more noticeable. So bringing in the pink on the bottom of these clouds and little bits inside of them to show that it's reflecting off of the sun coming down here. The sun is shining on the bottom of these clouds. So you're gonna see that pink show up on the bottom of these clouds. And because the sun is down here, we've got shadows on the tops of the clouds. So it's gonna be a little darker on the top, half of them. So I'm dropping in a darker blue on the top sides. And because my paper is still wet, these colors will blend really nicely together without me having to do much work at all. And with a little bit darker blue, there we go. I'm really liking how that's looking. I'm puddling up a little bit, so I'm lifting up those puddles. Okay. And just bringing the blues down a little bit more into this pink, so the pink isn't too in your face at the bottom of this page. There we go. Okay, I like how that's looking. Now this one seems basically dry. So we're gonna go in with a marker. And I'm not gonna use black watercolor paint just because it takes a while to get it pretty opaque and dark. So I'm using one of my larger pens. Let's see. So I'm going to use my Micron pen. It's a little bit thicker, but I can still get the detail that I want, especially with the branches that we're going to do um, and the trees and the birds. So this is the pen that I'm going to use. And you can always use a Sharpie if you want. I might just use a Sharpie here to show you filling in a lot of the darker spaces. But let's go in with our first one, which is a hill here, and then we've got a bigger tree. So be careful not to accidentally touch these wet ones right here. I'm gonna go in and create a cute little hill here. And it does not have to be perfect lines because it is nature. And on each of these, I'm going to create small trees. So I'm just going to create some lines for the trees here that are on these hills. And I'm filling them in by doing really small side to side motions to create the silhouette of these trees. And because they're so far away, this does not have to be perfect. Coming in, just going side to side, filling in those tree shapes. It looks really funky right now, but once we fill in this hill, 
it'll look like the beautiful silhouettes of trees on a hillside. Okay, and then we're gonna do a bigger tree right here just to kind of give it a much more sense of depth. So I'm gonna have this tree come up right here. I wanna make sure it's okay to rest my hand on that. And starting at the top, I'm just gonna make side to side, back and forth motions for this tree. And if it helps, you can also make these branches already. So it gives you a guide as to where you should give it those um, stickly pine coney branches. And then you're just gonna do this all the way down the tree. You can also do this with the black watercolor, but I just wanted to show you one with the Sharpie so you can see the difference and see how it looks with the opaque medium using such an opaque uh, marker on top of a watercolor. This is especially nice with night skies because your silhouettes are gonna be extremely dark because there's not really a lot of light reflecting on them. So you're gonna want those darks to be very, very dark. So there's our tree. And I'm gonna come fill this in with a I think I have a thicker black marker somewhere so I can do it faster, but we will just fill this in with your Sharpie. You may have doubted me at the very beginning, but I told you that it would look so nice once we filled in this part. Now I'm just doing kind of scraggly up and down motions here so I don't have those ugly side to side lines so it looks more like a, a fluffy fuzzy hill. I'm getting in all the edges here. And there we have our first Silhouette night sky, absolutely beautiful. Now we're gonna come into this one, which is our tree branch here. And we're gonna do that with a smaller brush. This brush has a really nice tip to it, which helps me get really fine details. And I'm gonna use that to create this tree here. Now I'm going in with my black watercolor paint. And I'm going to create a tree that's just kind of, it's a skinnier tree and the branches are gonna come out here down this corner and then we're gonna have our birds in the sky over here. So let's have this main branch. Now you don't want your lines to be perfect because trees never actually look like that in nature. Coming out with individual branches here, crossing over each other. And turning into smaller ones on the tips and edges of these longer branches. And I think I'll have one more up this way. Yeah, make sure you load your brush with that black paint because you can see as it dries, it's not as opaque. There we go. Now, if you want to leave it like that, 
has a much more kind of fall a tree during the fall like all the leaves will come off that's totally fine if you want to add some leaves just go ahead and with your brush just give it little dabbing motions towards the edges of your branches i'm not gonna have this be a super full tree just because i really love seeing these the look of the twisting and turning on the branches. But I'm just dabbing on some leaves here just to give it, make it feel a little more full of a tree. Same up here. Okay, I love how that looks. Now we're going to create bird silhouettes, which are just little Vs. And I think I will have them larger here and smaller up here so it looks like they're coming towards the viewer. I'm having the center be thicker than the tips of the wings and then a couple smaller ones let's do one more right there Okay, there is that sky. And then we're going to come in with, actually with this one, I want to add just a little bush over here because I feel like it's like a little empty. So I'm gonna bring this down here so you can kind of see the ground. And then similar with the leaf idea over here, just dabbing in little dots to look like a bush is peeking over the edge of this. Some flicks for grass. And there you have it. Okay, I definitely love how that looks now. Now we're going to do the ocean front. Bring this in. Also because I'm just loving the look of this right now, I'm gonna put some black watercolor over this to smooth out some of those harsher lines. There we go. Yeah, just needed a little bit of that. Okay, all done with that one. <laughs> now we're gonna come in with this beachy sunset. We're gonna do a similar thing that we did with the grass right here. Coming down and you're going to create very thin flicks that have slight a slight curve to them for the uh, leaves of this palm tree. Now the top of it I have is a little curved, curved just a little bit more. So you can see that this palm tree is in a different direction than the others that we're gonna do. And then I'm going to come up here with this one, creating the palm fronds here, keeping those brush strokes really kind of random and thin. And then for the last one, just kind of 
peeking over the edge here. With some curved lines there. See, it's nice to have that purple behind it because then it gives that sense of the purple reflecting off of the palm tree, which is really nice. So now we have that. Just gonna add a little bit more in here. And then we're gonna come in with the sandy beach. Taking that black again and kind of following the edge of this line that I already designed here. And I'm gonna leave in some white space so the sand has a chance to also reflect off this beautiful sky. Just leaving random white space in there. Now with the back here, I'm not going to make the black as opaque because it's further away from us, but I'm bringing the black along the top of that horizon line where we kind of marked the water to be. And then with a clean brush, we're going to go in and kind of create some watermarks with a pink purple color. To we're using pink and purple because it's similar to that of the sky. And I'm using that purple right along that horizon line. And I'm only making marks in the water right underneath that brightest kind of sun shape that we made. There we go. Now you have your water lines. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit more pink on those center ones. There we go. And then come in with some yellow on the yellow sections of our horizon line. Beautiful. I think that turned out really great. Okay, now we have our water. And I'm going to actually deepen that up a little bit with the pink. Just give it a little more variance in that water because the top of the water is pretty, pretty loose and wavy. There we go, that's more of the look I wanted. Get some darker pinks in there, some more vibrant yellows. Okay, then you have your beachy scene right here. Now we're gonna move on to the last one, which is the birds on the telephone wire. The phone wire, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna go in with my really fine tip brush again. And I'm going to make, oops, the telephone wire lines. And make them pretty even here. And with more detailed stuff like this, sometimes it's nice to have your Sharpie or your marker 
And I'm gonna go and make these birds, just filling in that outline that you made with your brush of the two circles and the tail. I love that these are really chunky birds. <laughs> And bringing the tail down here. And the last one on this top one. There we go. And then again to do these guys down here. And once this dries, the nice thing is I can actually erase these pencil marks because the watercolor in the background is pretty light, especially with the clouds there. So it is okay. I give these guys little beaks just to add a little something to it. Okay, there's our birds on the telephone wire. Okay, here is the final look of the four different silhouetted skies that we did. I think they turned out beautifully. You could cut these out, put them on your wall, give them as cards to somebody, but I really think this taught us how to utilize colors with wet on wet and really just have fun with these loose, beautiful blended tones. So. I hope you guys enjoyed and take what you learned to continue to be creative in your own fun way.